Right, uh, turning to physical security and uh, the division of, of controls that come under that category. Um, now, I mean, we will go through uh, physical security itself as, as a domain, but, uh, you know, look, there are all kinds of uh, controls that, that come under the category of physical security, quite apart from physical security as, as a domain. Well, not necessarily apart from, but certainly, you know, there's an awful lot more physical security involved in, in uh, our controls than um, we tend to think about. Um, there's, uh, you know, there's building security, there's the physical access controls and, and those sorts of things, but in terms of the building, there are also construction-related issues. Uh, when we do cable runs, you know, are we physically securing uh, those cable runs? Are they accessible uh, to, to someone in, in dark and hidden places? You know, do we put our cables through uh, conduit so that people can't uh, easily just, you know, clip on to a cable, a network cable, and, and you know, be on our network, uh, read all our traffic, um, possibly even inject uh, traffic that we do not necessarily want to have on our system, uh, you know, possibly degrading performance, so we have a partial denial of service at that uh, uh, sending uh, bogus packets, bogus messages, bogus email uh, by doing that and, and having, you know, the, the physical, the extra layer of physical security of running conduit when we are dealing with uh, our network cabling uh, is, you know, one of the possible controls to look at that doesn't necessarily come under physical security, it's more in terms of our communications and, and networking security. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, in, in terms of the building, what do we, we have? We'll, we'll talk more about construction issues again in physical security, but there's lots of things that we have. Do we have, you know, compartmentalization in physical terms? You know, when we have a cabling room, when we have an archive room, um, you know, what are the uh, physical controls that we put on those? Um, with our network nodes, uh, what are the physical uh, controls that we put on there? Very often we will have a, a networking node for our networks that isn't in a compartmentalized area, that isn't in a specialized and protected area. And, you know, where is that node? What kind of... Uh, physical protection does it have which can be you know as, as small as simply a walk-in cabinet um, what about the cable routing um, I, I know that uh, you know people don't tend to think of, of uh, cabling these days and, and certainly uh, over the last 20 years it's uh, no, 30 years ago I can remember situations where uh, people were not caring about the about the cabling um, and uh, not even paying attention to cable links and, and uh, you know issues there that can degrade performance because we are not uh, paying attention to various factors that are uh, at odds with our you know continued and reliable communications um, in, in terms of a physical control, what about data backup? You know, and, and securing those backups. Now, as I've mentioned before, you know, there is the uh, relatively easy and, and should be provided in, in any case. Uh, means of encrypting the backup so that if the, the backup tape is, is lost or 
stolen, uh, you know, somebody doesn't have access to all of that data immediately. Um, but, uh, you know, do we, do we lock up uh, those backups? Do we, you know, what kind of physical protection do we do? Do we give it to an outside company? And if we give it to an outside company, do we uh, ensure that we know what kind of physical protection that company is uh, putting into guarding our data uh, and issues there. Um, separation of, of work areas as, as well as the duties. I mean, we, you know, we've talked about uh, separation of duties. We've talked about uh, auditing and, and so forth there. Um, do we uh, actually separate the the work areas sometimes for for some people we'll talk about uh, uh, the uh, uh, Chinese wall model of, of separating uh, groups who are working on projects um, uh, that may be related but should not be communicating uh, for uh, you know, certainly legal means in, in some cases, um, but uh, sometimes so that we can ensure that, you know, there is true independence of uh, the work that is, is going on. So we are not, uh, you know, we have, as, as we talked about, isolation of our processes um, where uh, it could very easily happen that um, work that we are thinking is, is being done in isolation is in fact relying, you know, one, one piece of work is relying on another and therefore what we think of as a, a safeguard may not be providing that safeguard to us. So, you know, all of these types of things come under uh, the, uh, the physical controls, um, whether or not we are thinking of them in uh, in actual physical security. You know, it, it can be that uh, a great many technical controls do require some kind of physical protection, uh, some kind of physical layering, some kind of, of physical controls uh, that are backing up what we are doing in security overall.